When Alaric used to not believe in the phrase, if someone is destined for you, they will come back to you. Now, he contemplates that thought that had lingered in his mind for years. After Anna was declared fit to go home from the hospital today, it was the first time Alaric persuaded a woman to stay in his mansion. Anna, unplanned, his heart gradually fell for her. Even Alaric, known for never valuing women, was now begging Anna. Anna was torn. She gazed at Alaric's fingers gently entwined, pleading for her to return to his mansion. She diverted her gaze, looking at him intensely, and he did the same. His usually sharp eyes now held a soft and melancholic expression, as if they were diving into Anna's honeyed eyes with a pleading look. Right. Believe it. The heavy burden Alaric had been feeling inside his chest seemed to lift just like that upon hearing Anna say those words. Alaric let out a sigh of relief. Great, let's pack your things and you can return to the mansion soon. As Alaric was about to get up from his seat to help Anna pack, a firm grip stopped him in his tracks. What's wrong? Alaric looked at Anna with a puzzled expression. I have a request, Anna said. Alaric sat back down. What is it? Stop treating me like this. Alaric furrowed his brows in confusion. Um, I, I mean, treat me like before, as a master and a servant. Unconsciously, Alaric shook his head while Anna looked at him with a questioning gaze. Why? Alaric took a deep breath and let it out. I can't treat you the same as before because now my feelings for you are different. Thud. Thud. What did Alaric mean by those words? What do you mean? Anna asked nervously. Alaric shook his head, not wanting to answer, almost revealing too much. No, forget it. Okay, if that's what you want, I'll do it. Anna smiled faintly, and Alaric got up again to help her pack her belongings. This was also the first time in his life he had done something like this. Now I understand, Anna, why I'm doing all this, because I love you. Alaric looked at Anna, who was gazing outside from the bed near the window. Unconsciously, he smiled, observing Anna from just one meter away. Alaric was whipped. Arvin ruffled his hair roughly as he descended the stairs in his cousin's mansion. His waiting yesterday had been in vain leading him to decide to stay overnight at Alaric's residence. However, until now, his cousin was nowhere to be seen in the mansion either. His tiredness had caused him to wake up from sleep, which was still not restful after that incident. Where are you, Annie? He almost gave up looking for the girl who had captivated his heart since he first saw her serving drinks in this mansion. Until a foolish idea crossed his clever mind leading him to do what he did just to have Ronnie completely. And indeed, he was her first. The clock had struck 10, but Alaric's whereabouts were still unseen. A servant approached him with drink in hand. This is your drink, sir. Arvin nodded. Thank you. He smiled. The servant didn't immediately leave, still standing in front of him. What's the matter? Arvin looked at the servant confusedly. Hmm. I, I'm sorry, sir. Are you my sister's new employer? The servant seemed timid. Arvin furrowed his brows. Your sister? The girl servant nodded. Rainy, my sister. Thud, thud. Uh, so this girl in front of me is Rainy's younger sister? Both of them are servants in this house. Ow! Oh, God. I really regret ruining this. Please reunite me with her as soon as possible, and I promise to marry her right away when I find her. Sir... The call interrupted his thoughts. Arvin cleared his throat. Looking at the girl who was still standing, holding a tray that previously brought his drink. What's your name? My name is Nina, sir. Arvin nodded. How old are you? Nineteen years old. Arvin fell silent for a moment. I apologize, sir. She your new employer? Nina asked again. Arvin nodded. Yes, I'm her new employer. Nina smiled with bright eyes, but then it dimmed. But 
Why doesn't my sister visit me anymore? She mumbled to herself, but Arvin faintly caught her words. As he was about to continue the conversation, a voice made Arvin turn around. Why are you here? Arvin gestured for Nina to return to the kitchen. As his cousin approached him, Arvin scratched his nape that wasn't itchy seeing his cousin's poker face. You're used to this, bro? I, I haven't been here for a long time. Why don't you greet me and ask about my well-being first? Alaric sat on the sofa. Is that important? Arvin scratched his neck again, sighed irritably. Are you going to be rude even if you found the woman you love? Gotcha. Alaric fell silent. Arvin smiled when he saw his cousin's reaction. Oh, I see. Uh, Could it be that you've already found the woman you love, so you're acting this way with me? Arvin said teasingly. It was only then that Arvin realized that Alaric was not alone. He turned and found a girl holding a handbag standing not far away, giving him an awkward smile. Oh, is this her? Arvin asked eagerly, leaving the sofa to approach the girl who was still standing awkwardly. As he was about to ask the girl something, Alaric's words stopped him. No, she's just a servant. Alaric got up from his seat and put his hands in his pants pocket. His statement managed to make someone's heart ache upon hearing it. However, it was successfully concealed with a smile. So, excuse me? She said, giving a slight curtsy before leaving. So, why did you come here? Arvin squinted his eyes in annoyance and huffed irritably. Why did his cousin always know when he needed his help? I take back what I said yesterday, cousin. Arvin said. Alaric smiled teasingly. You only call me cousin when you need my help. Nothing's changed. What is it this time? Taking back your words, but you've swallowed them yesterday. How can you take them back? Arvin sighed in frustration. Why did his cousin always manage to counter his words? Uh, forget it. I don't want to exchange pleasantries. I need your help. I need it because I want to find Randy quickly. Alaric folded his hands and smiled dismissively. You've only been trying for one week on your own, and now you're giving up. Arvin stayed silent, choosing not to respond to Alaric, who was currently speaking. Is this the same Arvin Nagara Johnson who proclaimed to the whole world that he's in love, and now you're giving up on your love? Patience, R. Don't interrupt. Patience. Now's not the time to interrupt your love expert cousin speaking, but he couldn't help but be impatient. I'm not giving up. I just want to find Rainy quickly. Alaric smiled mysteriously. Don't you know that there's nothing instant in this world? In life, it is predetermined that everything is not just about us. Our desires that may be coveted by others or in any aspect, we should never hope for more, that it will align with what we expect. The same goes for sacrifices. We know it's about sacrificing, but humans still crave the instant. Don't we already know that life is a process? Or is it just a common slogan? One that is highly esteemed but actually means nothing? Alaric looked at Arvin with a smile. Both of them sat facing each other on the living room sofa, wearing different expressions. Don't you know there's nothing instant in this world? A wry smile appeared when Alaric saw Arvin's sour expression and him lowering his head. I just want to meet Rainy quickly, cousin. Arvin pleaded. Don't you know this world is not just about you and all your desires? Alaric interlocked his hands in front of him and gazed at Arvin with a flat look. The age difference between them was only one year, but here Arvin seemed very childish, demanding to have his wishes fulfilled. Yes, I know. Arvin replied flatly. Then he smiled bitterly and sat up straight on the sofa. But it, it's not just about me either. Rainy has been missing for over a month, and I've been trying to find her. I'm just afraid what if she's pregnant with my child now. Thud. Thud. Alaric's expression changed to unreadable as he remained silent. I just don't want my child to be born without knowing who their biological father is, and I don't want to be in the dark about whether they exist in this world or not. Alaric's jaw tightened as he listened to Arvin's words that unknowingly struck him. 
I've fallen in love with her. I even dared to do that because I've already decided that someday she will be the mother of my children. I love Rainy Cousin. That's my biggest reason for wanting to find her quickly. Even if it means using the instant way you mentioned and not doing it alone because I need your connections. I don't care. Arvin admitted honestly. Arvin heaved a sigh of relief for having confessed all the burdens that troubled his cousin. He didn't care if he would be scolded or face other consequences. His focus was solely on Ronnie. Alaric fell silent for a moment before deciding to head to his office. Arvin, seeing Alaric leaving without saying a word, sighed in disappointment. It seemed that his confession was considered as mere bragging and bullshit by his cousin. After all, Arvin used to be a womanizer, making Alaric not believe in him. Arvin got up from the sofa, deciding to return to his apartment. Staying here for too long wasn't making him feel at ease. Alaric lay back on his office chair in his mansion, lost in thought over Arvin's words. His memories turned to the time when he lost a woman who dared to leave him first, causing him to search for her until he became frustrated. But the difference was, he didn't love that woman. He was only curious, but ended up becoming addicted. A child? Alaric recalled Arvin's words about that. He would become a potential father, but that hope had to vanish instantly. Knowing and feeling the loss at the same time, it was not a suitable combination. Alaric was not a good person, but he also didn't want the same fate to befall someone else. Alaric's hand reached for an intercom connecting directly to the head servant, Rosaline. His mouth ordered her to bring someone to his office. Not long after, a woman dressed in a complete servant's attire entered and approached his desk. Alaric stood up to approach her and hugged her. Why are you already wearing your servant's clothes, Anna? You haven't fully recovered. He whispered beside Anna's ear. Anna tensed, surprised. Alaric's sudden behavior left her standing frozen. Anna, who just realized what was happening, tried to break free from Alaric's embrace. He pardon me, sir. Don't do this. She stuttered. Just a moment. Anna gave in, letting Alaric keep hugging her. Whatever happened to him that made him act this way? I'm recharging my energy, Alaric said causing Anna to tense again within the hug when he uttered those words. Why are you not answering my question? Why are you already wearing your servant's clothes? Alaric repeated, I feel much better, sir, so I need to go back to work. Anna replied. Alaric clicked his tongue. Okay, why don't you call me by my name without the seer like you did yesterday? Unbeknownst to Alaric, Anna's face blushed when such a question came from a heartless man like him. Anna tried to break free from the hug again, and she succeeded. The hug loosened, and they both stood facing each other at a close distance. Anna took a step back, keeping a distance. Forgive my audacity yesterday, sir, she said politely. Alaric sighed irritably upon hearing Anna's polite words. He preferred to hear annoyed, angry, or even rude responses from the woman in front of him. Fig me, sir, but if I may know, why did you call for me? Anna asked cautiously. Alaric turned around and walked back to his office chair to sit down again. Their gazes clashed, but it was not a gaze of hatred that was visible. I miss her, he said. Thud. Why? What's happening to you, Anna? Why is your heart beating faster? Anna tried to hide her nervousness, afraid that her boss might hear the sound of her heartbeats. Um, sister, if there's nothing else needed, please excuse me. Anna quickly turned around and walked towards the door to leave her boss's office. Alaric, who saw Anna's nervous gestures, remained silent without saying anything. He let Anna leave his room hoping that she would return to her room to rest. Why did I say that? Alaric murmured, smiling to himself like a fool. Anna, who had just closed her boss's office door, leaned her back against it. She felt her chest thumping. Why is his reaction so intense? She mumbled to herself, 
her hand still touching her chest as she enjoyed the rapid heartbeat rhythm with a baffled smile. A girl narrowed her sharp eyes as she peeked at Anna, who was leaning against the door, smiling to herself. She clenched her fists in frustration as she observed an unpleasant scene. So losing your potential child hasn't taught you a lesson, huh, Anna? If I can't have a Larek, then no one can, especially not you, Anna. She grumbled to herself. Just a mere servant. She said in a low voice, but emphasized each word. The girl decided to leave her hiding place as she was too annoyed to watch the drama. She preferred to come up with ideas to carry out her plan. I'm sick of this. Today is the perfect time to get rid of you, Anna. Where are we actually going, cousin? Alaric glanced at Arvin briefly. Hearing such a question from an adult man like Arvin was quite amusing. Be quiet and wait until we reach our destination. Arvin sighed in frustration, realizing that he had neglected himself after losing Rani from his apartment. All right. Today, without Arvin's knowledge, Alaric would take him to another mansion he owned, which was equally grand as the one they lived in. Perhaps this was the right time to bring them together, considering that Arvin's appearance now wasn't much different from when he was searching for Anna. Alaric's car entered the courtyard of the second mansion. Arvin glanced at the luxurious building fleetingly, no longer interested as he was when he first set foot in Alaric's grand mansion. His admiration had completely disappeared. There was no longer any awe for an inanimate object. All of that admiration, he last expressed it on the night he had Ronnie all to himself. Thinking of her, Arvin felt longing. Ronnie, where are you now? Is this your mansion, cousin? Alaric mumbled in agreement and got out of the car first. The number of servants in the second mansion was not as many as the main one he occupied. The important thing was to ensure that someone occupied this second mansion and it wasn't left empty. Why are we here, actually? I just want to meet my Rainy. Why are you showing off your wealth by showing me this mansion? Arvin looked at Alaric sharply, frustrated by the man's constant talking. Your mouth is really like a woman's, are always chattering. Alaric retorted. Unbeknownst to both of them, they had arrived in front of the main door of the mansion. Shortly after, the door opened, leaving Arvin stunned. But it wasn't just Arvin. Someone else also opened the door. Rainy, with just one step, Arvin approached Ronnie and immediately embraced his woman, whom he had been searching for until he felt frustrated. Finally, I found you. Wait, Arvin's voice. My goodness, the man was crying while hugging Ronnie. Arvin crying. Meanwhile, Ronnie just stood there, bewildered and unsure of what to do. I miss you. I miss you so bad, Ronnie. Alaric, who saw the two of them embracing, sighed softly and walked inside without paying any attention to their emotional reunion. Alaric leaned back tiredly on the sofa after driving for about three hours. However, he only closed his eyes for a moment before a sarcastic voice entered his ears, making him open his eyes instantly. Ah, uh, truly annoying. He grumbled lazily to himself. You're such a jerk, cousin. Alaric smirked as Arvin followed him and sat on the sofa, facing him. You said you didn't know Rainy's whereabouts, but you were the one hiding her. Arvin hissed, trying to contain his emotions. Meanwhile, Rainy just stood at the corner of the sofa, not daring to approach. That's my punishment for you, for ruining an innocent girl like Ronnie. Alaric replied casually. You know my reason for doing that, cousin. Because I... Because you love her? Alaric guessed, laden with mockery. Ronnie was startled to hear what her master had just said. Arvin loved her. Her thoughts were in disarray. If you love her, you should have treated her well. You should have protected her with all your heart. Alaric's words weren't entirely wrong. Okay, I admit I was wrong. Arvin said, bowing his head. Then he turned to look at Rainy, getting up from the sofa. And surprisingly, 
Arvin knelt down before her, leaving her flustered. Ryan, forgive me. I know I've done wrong. I sh- Sir Arvin, please stand up. Don't do this. Ronnie held Arvin's arms, trying to make him stand up, but Arvin shook his head firmly. No, not until you're willing to forgive me and accept me as your husband. Ronnie fell silent. She hadn't recovered from the shock of her master's confession, and now she was truly surprised by what he said about wanting to become her husband. Why are you still silent, Ray? Arvin raised his head. Please stand up first, sir. Ronnie insisted, but Arvin reigned resolute, shaking his head. Ronnie took a deep breath. All right, sir. Alaric, who had been watching them with annoyance, decided to head to his private room to rest for a while before deciding to return to his main mansion later. Seeing the cheesy romantic scene in front of him made him sleepy. Anna, you're called by Mother Rose in the warehouse. Someone informed Anna. Anna furrowed her brows in confusion. Why would Mother Rose call her, but wait for her in the warehouse? All right. Anna, who'd been tidying up her washed clothes, quickly put them in her wardrobe, neatly folded. Very. Anna called the woman who had just informed her before she disappeared from sight. Gia was one of the servants from the villa behind and rarely came to the main mansion, except when she needed something important. Yes, Anna. Do you know why Mother Rose called me? The servant called Gia shook her head, not knowing the reason. Okay, I'll go first, Anna. I want to fetch some items. Anna nodded, allowing her to go. Empty, Anna was left alone in the room. Uh, Maybe Mother Rose wants me to help clean up the warehouse. She thought and immediately headed to where Mother Rose was waiting for her. Dark, dark. As Anna arrived in the warehouse as informed by Gia, she wondered where Mother Rose was. The dark condition of the warehouse made Anna even more curious. She took a few more steps inside, assuming Mother Rose was already there. Not long after, the smell of gas filled her nostrils and her instincts told her that something bad was about to happen. When Anna intended to turn around, the door closed, plunging the dim light that was previously visible into complete darkness after the door shut. She immediately ran to the door, trying to knock on it and ask for help. Help? Anyone outside? Hey, is there anyone outside? The scent of gas became even stronger, making it difficult for her to breathe. Help, open the door. Cough, cough. Her chest felt tight over time. Tears began to stream down her face as she struggled to breathe. Oh God, whoever is outside, please help me. Her thoughts weakened. Anna tried knocking on the door with a slower rhythm as she was truly exhausted now. Slowly, her consciousness slipped away. Gia. Called a girl hiding behind a pillar in the small villa behind Alaric's mansion. Yes. Gia, feeling called, stopped in her tracks. Are you going to the main mansion? Asked the girl, and Gia nodded in response. Could you do me a favor? The girl smiled. Tell Anna that Mother Rose is calling her to the warehouse. I can't tell her directly as I have to go shopping for vegetables now. Understanding? Gia nodded. Okay. The girl smiled happily. Thank you, Gia. You're welcome. After saying that, Gia bid farewell first and hurried to the main mansion, leaving the girl alone with a mysterious smile. This time, you won't be lucky, Anna. I can assure you of that. Her smile was filled with hatred and the satisfaction of carrying out her plan. Alaric drove his car like a madman. After receiving news from Rosaline that Anna had disappeared, he stepped on the gas without caring about the calls from Arvin, whom he had invited earlier. He even left Arvin at his second mansion. The issue of finding out who was behind Anna's miscarriage had not been resolved, and now Anna had gone missing. Someone had sabotaged the CTV at his house, and Alaric was discreetly investigating it with Aiden. He was sure that the culprit was one of the residents of his house, someone who had free access in and out of his mansion. But who? Patience, Rick, 
It's still under investigation. Various negative thoughts filled his mind right now, especially concerning Anna. Moreover, Anna had already told him that there was no reason for her to stay in Alaric's mansion after the loss of their unborn child. Did Anna choose to leave the mansion? Alaric ruffled his hair harshly. God was truly cruel to him after he had kindly helped Arvin find his beloved. God repaid his kindness with this situation. God! Why did Alaric suddenly mention God, whom he hadn't remembered or considered at all? Yes, maybe this was the right retribution for him. Or perhaps it was punishment for not remembering God all this time. Speeding above the average, his car raced, overtaking other vehicles in front of him, regardless of the risk to his life. Where else are you, Anna? He asked in frustration. Alaric's car finally arrived safely in the courtyard of his mansion, and he got out hastily. Rosaline rushed towards him. How is it, Rosaline? Have you found her? Not yet, sir. Search every corner of this mansion thoroughly and gather all the servants working here without exception. Maybe someone saw Anna before she disappeared from this house. Alaric ordered firmly. Yes, sir. After saying that, Rosaline went to call some servants and asked them to call the others while inquiring if anyone had seen Anna before she vanished. Alaric didn't want to lose Anna for the second time. One time was enough to frustrate him. Sir, Rosaline called with a pale face. A servant from the back villa knows where Anna went, sir. This immediately caught Alaric's sharp gaze. Call her and bring her here. Yes, sir. Gia walked hesitantly toward her master. Alaric stared at Gia flatly with an intimidating look. Do you know where Anna is? Alaric asked, his aura cold. I, I, I'm not sure, sir, but I was ordered to tell Anna that Mother Rose called her and wanted to meet her in the warehouse, Gia said honestly and fearfully. Alaric's sharp eyes shifted to Rosaline. Quickly search the warehouse. Several servants, security guards, and gardeners rushed to the warehouse leaving Alaric, Rosaline, and Gia. Is what Rosaline said true? That's not true, sir. Since earlier, I've been in the backyard telling some gardeners to clean the backyard. Rosaline replied, Gia, who told you this? Rosaline asked Gia back. Gia, however, bowed in fear as she was clueless. Before Gia could answer, a shout came from the direction of the warehouse. Sir, Anna is here, sir. A man's voice immediately made Alaric rush towards the warehouse. Thump. His heart felt like it would leap out of its place, seeing Anna lying weakly with a pale face. The smell of toxic gas permeated the air as the warehouse door swung wide open. You damn bastards. Who did all of this? Alaric immediately approached Anna, who was lying unconscious, and cradled her. Call the driver. Prepare the car. We're taking Anna to the hospital now. Alaric commanded, seeming possessed. Swiftly, Alaric carried Anna and ran towards the car that had been prepared. Drive fast. He ordered. Alaric held Anna close, not wanting to let go of her. He looked into Anna's eyes, which were now closed, gently brushing away some stray hair and caressing her lovingly. Hold on, my dear. We'll arrive soon. Alaric whispered softly. Drive faster, he shouted impatiently. After bringing Anna to the hospital, he would find out who was behind this incident, and that person wouldn't be alive for long. At the hospital, Alaric was no less frantic when he shouted for the doctors to immediately attend to Anna. He even threatened to shut down the hospital he visited, which was still closely related to the Johnson family. The actual owner of the hospital was the parents of Arvin, his cousin. Alaric leaned his back against the IQ room wall. Anna had been taken into that room because she had inhaled too much toxic gas, and the doctors had to extract all the gas she had inhaled. It had happened twice now. He had lost their unborn child, and now what? He had almost lost Anna. Remembering that, 
he immediately pulled out his cell phone from his pants pocket and made a call. It had been nearly two hours since Alaric paced back and forth in front of the IQ room. Not a single doctor had come out of the room to update him. Alaric rubbed his face harshly. His feelings were restless as he watched Anna from outside the room with various equipment attached to her body. So agitated was he that Alaric didn't notice someone approaching him. Whoa. Alaric turned around to find Aiden standing not far from him, exhaling a long breath. How is she? Alaric asked hoarsely. Aiden took a deep breath and exhaled it. You'll be surprised and won't expect who caused all of this to Anna. Alaric lazily looked at Aiden. Now was not the time to play guessing games. He just wanted to know who dared to hurt his Anna. Don't beat around the bush, Aiden. Who dares to touch my Anna? Alaric hissed. He was too tired right now. With a single breath, Aiden answered, Nina. In this world, there is no human who is truly good, and there is no human who is truly evil. It all depends on how you judge them. Amidst the booming music in the club, drowning out all other sounds, Alaric raised a bottle of champagne, pouring it down sip by sip. Aviana, where are you? He muttered. Alaric was now completely unconscious due to finishing a whole bottle of alcohol. Normally, he wasn't someone who got drunk easily, but this time he chose a drink with a higher alcohol content than usual. The unsuccessful search for Anna made Alaric want to clear his mind. Sir, you are heavily intoxicated. It's better if you book a room upstairs, warned the bartender, who had been serving Alaric's requests all night. Anna, you damn bitch. He grumbled. Sir, called the bartender, seeing Alaric was already tipsy. The bartender noticed Alaric's phone lying not far from him and searched for a contact to call. Alaric was a regular customer at the club where he worked, so the bartender knew exactly who Alaric was often with. Aiden put his arm around Alaric's shoulder, guiding him as he stumbled out of the car and towards the entrance of the mansion. Upon reaching the front door, Alaric told Aiden to go home immediately, not allowing Aiden to escort him inside. You better go home. Keep searching for Anna until you find her and bring her to me. He said, half conscious. I'd rather accompany you inside first, and then I'll follow your order to find Anna, replied Aiden. Alaric shook his head, giving a sardonic smile. Do you think I can't go in by myself, just go home? Aiden let out a heavy sigh, observing the stubbornness of his friend and master. All right. Afterward, Aiden left in his car, leaving Alaric to slightly stumble while grabbing the doorknob. As he was about to push the door open, a pull from the other side nearly made Alaric stumble, if not for someone who held the door and prevented him from falling. Sir. Alaric looked up to see who had helped him from falling. The vague face of the woman made his smile widen. Anna, I finally found you. I'm Nina, sir. It seems you are quite drunk tonight. Let me take you to your room, said Nina. Without resistance, Alaric let Nina lead him to a private room that Nina had never set foot in, as it wasn't part of her duties. Nina put Alaric down and covered him with a blanket after removing his shoes. As she was about to leave, a hand gripped her and pulled her down to sit on the bed in Alaric's embrace. Where are you going, huh? You want to leave me again? Not prepared for what had just happened, Nina's lips suddenly landed on Alaric's. Nina remained frozen as Alaric passionately kissed her. Sir, she said hesitantly between their kisses. Nina admitted that even though it wasn't their first kiss, kissing her master still made her nervous, as it had never been in her thoughts before. Why do your lips feel different this time, my love? Nina's heart raced hearing the endearment from her master, whom she had admired in silence. Ah, oh, forget it. Just kiss me now. Alaric united their lips again. His kisses trailed down Nina's neck, causing her to moan. Sir, 
Nina's moan only fueled Alaric's desire. His hands slipped under her maid uniform. Thus, a heated encounter between Alaric and Nina took place that night, coinciding with the second week of searching for Anna without any success. As she was about to leave, a hand gripped her and pulled her down to sit on the bed in Alaric's embrace. The next morning, Nina acted as if nothing had happened, although she felt disappointed that last night. They reached the pinnacle of pleasure together, but her master called out another woman's name. However, after the incident last night, even though Alaric wasn't the first man for her, Nina was determined to fully possess him, change her family's fate, and eliminate the woman named Anna from Alaric's mind. Whoever that woman was, as for Alaric in his drunken state last night, he couldn't remember anything. He woke up in confusion, not knowing why he was undressed, and even the bedsheet was in such disarray. The only thing he vaguely remembered was meeting Anna again and ending up in bed, though he felt something was different. It felt like a very vivid dream. After that, he couldn't remember anything because he was too drunk. Like human life, which tends to be dynamic and easily changeable, human hearts. Who knows? Someone who is good to you today might become the one who hurts you the most later on. That's why caution is necessary, especially when it comes to protecting yourself. Alaric looked at Aiden with an incredulous gaze. Not incredulous gaze. Not incredulous, but more of not yet digestible for his brilliant mind. Nina, how could that girl harm Anna? How was that possible? As far as he knew, that girl was very nice to Anna. You must be confused, wondering why Nina did this, right? Asked Aiden, not getting a response. However, Aiden understood what was going on in Alaric's mind. Calm down, I'm investigating. Haven't we known her as a sweet girl all this time? But I think you might know her even better. You told me that you often observe the way your maids work. Anna is new to your mansion, and it seems that she has never caused any problems with the other maids. And don't you know that Anna and Nina were close? Or maybe there's something else, like Nina having feelings for you. So all these problems occurred. Aiden guessed casually. Alaric's eyebrows furrowed, giving Aiden a sharp look. He didn't like his secretary's speculations. What do you mean? Aiden let out a long sigh. Yes, I'm just making assumptions. Think about it. Everything was fine before Anna's arrival. There were no strange or painful incidents in your mansion like in the past few days. But after she arrived... Aiden paused briefly when he caught sight of Alaric's right hand clenching. You paid special attention to Anna because she was the one you were looking for, right? It's possible that someone didn't like the special attention you gave to Anna, and that person is Nina. Especially since Nina has been working with you for years, and she has never caused any trouble. Ah, or perhaps could it be that you did something that prompted her to act recklessly? Enough. So now you're accusing me? I'm not accusing you, Al. I'm just making assumptions and trying to connect the dots to form an assumption. Because I saw Nina locking Anna in the warehouse. Thankfully, the KT there wasn't damaged like the incident with Anna falling down the stair. Oh, and is it possible that Nina caused Anna to slip? There was oil on the stairs at the time, and only the kitchen staff can access cooking oil, right? Shit, it, shit. Alaric's speculations disturbed him. How could Aiden's assumptions make so much sense to him? Besides, what was wrong with him treating Anna specially? Was it wrong? I also assumed that based on what I saw in the CTV footage of the warehouse, I overheard Nina mentioning that she would soon become the mistress of your mansion. After that, she left the warehouse. Aiden explained. Alaric fell silent. His jaw clenched and his clenched fists showed his muscles. If all the assumptions Aiden made were true, that damn girl wouldn't survive. And what was that? Mistress? Say, no way. That's all I wanted to say. I'll investigate further about that girl and find out what motivated her to do that. Aiden added when Alaric suddenly snapped out of his thoughts. Please handle the office matters. I leave it to you for now. And don't let that girl escape before I see her. Aiden was momentarily taken aback to hear Alaric say, please, for the first time. 
He smiled and nodded. That's my duty. You should rest for a bit, Al. I heard you had a long trip with your cousin Alvin. Alaric shook his head. Yes, that's right. I escorted him to meet his beloved Ronnie. But his sister, damn that girl. Alaric grumbled, hitting the corridor wall of the IQ, causing his knuckles to get hurt. Alaric glanced briefly at the room where Anna was. I can't leave Anna alone here. I already left her once, and it ended up like this. All right, I'll go first. Alaric let out a long sigh. Mm. Mina had just stepped into the kitchen after shopping, where Sister Ronnie was there washing fruits. As she was about to speak to her sister, Mrs. Rose arrived, bringing someone with her. Nina, meet Anna. She will now replace Sarah in assisting you both. Anna? The reactions of the two siblings were contrasting. Ronnie immediately smiled and extended her hand for a handshake, introducing herself. Meanwhile, Nina paused for a moment, pondering, who was she? However, a second later, she also extended her hand and smiled thinly, introducing herself as Nina. Since that brief introduction, Nina secretly observed Anna's actions, especially after learning that Anna claimed to be pregnant. Nina felt somewhat anxious. What if it was true? Ah, uh, forget it. But unfortunately, while she kept a close watch on Anna, she found nothing suspicious. That is, until the master returned to the mansion. Everything became clear then. His behavior, tone, and gaze were markedly different towards Anna. He even assigned Anna to clean Alaric's room, an area that had been off-limits for years, and it was only due to his drunken state that she had access. Surely Anna was the one he mentioned that night. This was further confirmed when Nina secretly caught Anna heading to his room at night. It seemed more like flirting. Unfortunately, that night, she was not fertile, so she couldn't seize the opportunity to ensnare Alaric easily. Now, she might be considered cunning, but his actions indirectly encouraged her to take reckless measures, providing her with an opportunity to have Alaric by any means necessary. And the pinnacle was when Nina overheard Anna speaking with Mrs. Rose, claiming that the child she was carrying belonged to Alaric. Nina's patience wore thin, and her fear of being cast aside made her consider drastic action. Without much thought, she boldly spread cooking oil on the stairs leading to the upper room, which resulted in the joyful news that Anna had a miscarriage. It was a happy piece of news that made Nina feel triumphant. Unfortunately, Alaric's attention on Anna became even more apparent, causing Nina to lose her composure. Nina bit her thumbnail nervously, pacing around her room anxiously. She never expected the master to return earlier than anticipated. He usually spent a year at the villa with his cousin. Moreover, the villa was outside the city, which meant it would take him a long time to travel back and forth. The mansion was still bustling with staff. Even though Anna had been taken to the hospital, Nina hoped today would be the last day of Anna's life. She loathed that woman for capturing his attention in such a short time since her arrival. Although she was just a servant, she had been treated specially due to her young age when she first set foot in the mansion. However, ever since Anna arrived and revealed her pregnancy, all the special treatment shifted to her. Darn it, this isn't going according to my plan. Nina's mind suddenly went blank. She couldn't think of a way to make herself safe in this situation. Who could help her? Her sister. Oh, if only her sister were in the mansion. Or maybe... Wanda. Yes. Wanda seemed to dislike Anna since her arrival. Nina could try to leverage that and work together with Wanda. She decided to find Wanda. As Nina opened the door, she found herself face to face with Aiden, who had an expressionless face that left her frozen. Fifteen minutes after Aiden left, Alaric was still pacing back and forth. Seeing the ventilator covering her beautiful face made him wince in pain. 
His worry escalated when two out of the five doctors handling Anna came out of the IQ. In a panic, Alaric approached them immediately. How's Anna doing, doctors? He asked anxiously. After performing several treatments according to the procedures, we, the doctors, have done our best. However, since Miss Anna inhaled too much toxic gas, we can only hope for a miracle from God to stabilize her condition. She's still in critical condition, sir. If you arrive even a little later, her life may have been... One of the doctors explained. Alaric couldn't bear to hear the explanation and grabbed the doctor's collar, giving him a stern look. His hands clenched the doctor's collar tightly, instilling fear. I don't care. Save my future wife. I don't want to hear any explanations. Do everything you can, or I will forcefully close this hospital, and you'll all be jobless. Alaric's threat was serious. After saying that, he let go of the doctor's collar, who then bid farewell, but Alaric paid no attention to them. Alaric stood alone in the IQ corridor. He ruffled his hair roughly, feeling guilty for not protecting Anna properly. As three doctors who previously treated Anna approached, he ignored them. Slumping against the corridor wall, he slumped and looked down with overwhelming guilt. Anna, forgive me, he whispered. He wiped away the tears at the corner of his eyes harshly. For the first time, he shed tears for a woman. What was initially confusion now became clear. He loved his Anna deeply. Anna, I'm sorry I was careless in taking care of you. I hope you wake up soon, Anna. I promise I won't leave you for even a second. Alaric wiped his face roughly, then stood up with a look of suppressed anger. I will never forgive you, Nina. He declared angrily. As he was about to turn, Rosaline approached him with concern, followed by Wanda. Sir, how's Anna's condition? She asked worriedly. She's critical. He answered flatly and coldly. He ruffled his hair roughly. This time, Alaric would show his cruel side. If anyone dared to touch or harm what belonged to him, they would pay the price. Sir, may I enter and see Anna for a moment? Wanda asked, breaking the silence. Alaric fell silent, giving Wanda a sharp look. Are you Wanda? The woman nodded. Alaric glanced briefly at the room where Anna was. Just as he was about to respond, You... Sorry for interrupting, sir, but there's something I want to tell Anna, and I don't think I'll have the courage to say it when she wakes up. Wanda approached the still comatose Anna, fully dressed in protective clothing and a head covering. She knew that her presence had been reluctantly allowed by the master, as this time could have been used for his own personal matters rather than attending to a servant. Visitors' hours in the IQ were limited and followed specific schedules, unlike regular rooms. Despite being alone, Wanda knew Alaric could still watch her from a distance. However, that didn't concern her. She only wanted to say hello without any ulterior motives. Hi, Vaya. I don't know if I should be happy or sad to see you lying here, but I have to admit I'm worried. You were once an essential part of my life before everything fell apart. Wanda greeted, observing Anna's closed eyes. Wanda took a step closer, pulling a chair and sitting down, holding Anna's hand in hers. Vaya, I want to apologize. I'm sorry for everything I did to you back in high school. I admit I lost. I lost everything to you. Wanda's eyes began to well up, seeing her old high school friend lying unconscious like this. She admitted she wasn't a good person, but she couldn't bear to see Anna like this. If only Bayou didn't come between us, maybe you, Reyna, and I would still be good friends until now. And foolishly, I chose that jerk Bayou over our friendship and even bullied you. Vaya, I deeply regret it. I didn't even have the courage to say this when you're awake. Wanda sobbed, gently holding Anna's hand, which had an IV tube attached. Just after graduation, Bayou left me because he chose another woman over me. He was cheating. And you were right, Vaya. Bayou is not a good guy. Unfortunately, I was blinded by love and hatred towards you. 
as Bayou liked you more than me, and our first meeting after so long in Alaric's mansion. I was quite surprised, which made me confused about what to do, other than pretending not to like you, pretending to hate you, and it seemed to work. Even the readers berated me. The sarcastic remarks I made were just to be able to talk to you. I was too ashamed to apologize to you and chose to be honest now when you're like this. I'm such a coward. I couldn't believe it when I heard a few days ago that you had a miscarriage and that the baby you carried was Tuan Al's child. Even you had carried his child. I lost again. Vaya. Wanda laughed bitterly. She fell silent for a moment, taking a deep breath. Um, Vaya, may I make a confession? Silence. Wanda knew Anna wouldn't answer, so there was no sound other than the beeping of the electrocardiogram machine, as if responding to her words. Truthfully, I had feelings for Tuanale and intended to flirt with him, but I realized that if it concerned you, I would never win against an Aviana Airlies, a beautiful and friendly girl. And now I understand that good people like you deserve something worthy. Tuman L seems to love you sincerely, evident in how worried he is about you. Yes, I admit, I'm envious, but what can I do? Everything that happened was destined to be this way. Vaya, I will truly be on your side if the person who did this to you is caught. I promise. As Wanda finished her promise, the IQ door was knocked from the outside. Her visiting time had ended. Her master had informed her that he would knock as a signal when the visiting time was over. Now, Wanda stood, looking at Anna for a moment. Please wake up, Vaya, because I'm still waiting for your forgiveness. After saying that, Wanda left without looking back, finding her master standing with a flat expression and clasped hands. Sorry, sir, for taking so long. I'll leave now. Alaric nodded without saying a word, allowing Wanda to pass. Now it was Alaric's turn to wait for Anna, a wait filled with anxiety and hope. Alaric promised that once Anna regained consciousness, he wouldn't let the person who harmed her get away with it. It didn't take long after Wanda had left. Aiden immediately informed Alaric about the reason Nina did all those things to Anna. And there was something even more shocking that made Alaric's blood boil. His phone almost slipped from his hand in shock after hearing the information from Aiden. This time, there would be no mercy. Even though Alaric knew Nina was his cousin's beloved sister, he didn't care. However, before he took action, he had to wait for Anna to wake up from her critical condition. Throughout the night, Alaric couldn't sleep. His widened eye bags from lack of sleep and rest made him look utterly disheveled in the morning. Fortunately, Aiden came with fresh clothes and breakfast prepared by Rosaline, the mansion's head servant, as she was deeply concerned about her master's condition. Oh. Aiden sighed, seeing his friend and employer in one person. Alaric had changed into clean clothes, looking neat, but his face still appeared tired. You need to eat. It was a bit awkward to say something like that between two men, but it wasn't the right time to bring it up. The two of them sat face to face in the hospital cafeteria, one with a frustrated expression and the other wanted to maintain his trademark handsomeness. Alaric looked up, glaring at Aiden sharply. Is what you said last night true? Yes, the fact that she had hidden her feelings for you for so long. Unconsciously, Alaric's left hand clenched, suppressing his emotions from exploding. Considering that, he had to be reminded of other facts. That girl is really a piece of work. Alaric cursed Nina many times over. That girl was more wicked than he was, who had always been wicked. Alaric slammed the table, making a few people in the cafeteria look his way. I need to go to her and teach her a lesson. As Alaric was about to get up, Aiden spoke. Don't you want to wait for Anna to wake up? As far as I know, this morning she was moved from the IQ. Yes, indeed. It seemed like God had listened to Alaric's prayer last night, a sinner who prayed for the first time in years. A miracle came in the morning, with good news informing that Anna's condition had stabilized and she was moved to a not so ordinary room, 
a VIP room designated for wealthy individuals. Alaric weighed his thoughts. There was nothing wrong with Aiden's words. Yes, it seemed he would wait for Anna to wake up first, while devising a plan to get back at that despicable Nina. He didn't care if Nina was a woman or not. She had to be taught a lesson. Okay, I'll wait for Anna to wake up. You can go home now. Um, can I visit Anna first? Alaric stared at Aiden flatly. No, no. He replied with the same flat tone. Okay then, I'll leave if that's the case. Mm. Alaric's steps led him to Anna's hospital room. He entered and saw Anna still connected to a breathing machine, which was now more simplified, but also accompanied by an oxygen tube. Considering the amount of toxic gas she inhaled, she was fortunate to have survived until now. Alaric approached Anna and pulled a chair to sit next to her bed. This was the second time he had to wait for Anna like this. His hands carefully clasped her weak hand, which had an IV tube attached. Alaric kissed Anna's hand gently and caressed it softly. Darling, please wake up. I'm waiting for you here. After you wake up, let's get married, okay? Alaric gazed into Anna's closed eyes and whispered, I love you, Anna. I truly love you. Aiden stared blankly at Nina, who stood motionless before him. It wasn't too difficult to find her. She was still in the mansion, not trying to escape. Mr. Aiden, what is it? There's something I need to discuss with you. Come with me. Without objecting, Nina followed Aiden to Alaric's office, a place accessible to Aiden as he was Alaric's secretary. In Alaric's office, there was a long sofa facing a single sofa, and Aiden instructed Nina to sit on the long sofa, facing him. I apologize, sir. May I know why you asked me to come here? Nina's interlocked fingers revealed her fear. Aiden took a brief breath before speaking up. I never expected the girl I thought was kind to be merely an act. What do you mean, sir? Nina still didn't grasp the purpose behind her boss's words. Did Aiden already know that she was the one responsible for Anna being in the hospital? Aiden opened the laptop that was already on the table and showed a CCTV video displaying Nina locking Anna inside the warehouse. Nina fell silent. Her body tensed as she saw herself caught on CTV committing the act. She had forgotten that there were CTVs in the warehouse area as well. I knew that if I accused you outright of being the cause of Anna's critical condition, you would insist on denying it. But I have presented you with evidence. Is that you in the video? The girl in it. As Aiden was about to answer Nina's question, he added a phrase that silenced her even further. If you claim this video is edited, I investigated it before meeting you. And this video is 99% genuine. Nina swallowed hard, and her eyes began to well up. There was no point in denying it anymore. Even before she spoke, it seemed like Aiden knew what she was thinking. Nina could only nod and then look down. Yes, it's me. Aiden leaned back on the sofa, crossing his arms, and continued to give Nina a flat look. Give me your reasons. Aiden rubbed his face harshly. Should he tell Alaric everything that Nina had confided in him? He massaged his suddenly throbbing head. Drunk, sleeping together, hidden feelings. Well, it turned out his best friend was just as complicated. Already impregnated Anna and now sleeping with Nina, Aiden let out a soft snort, unsure who was more at fault here. He was just trying to connect the dots and find the truth. After all, there's no smoke without fire. Both of them were guilty and Anna ended up as the victim. He felt a surge of anger when Nina admitted, trembling, that she was also responsible for Anna's miscarriage. How could that be? They were both women, after all. What if Alaric found out? Aiden believed Alaric wouldn't spare Nina, but what troubled him the most was whether he should reveal everything. Aiden weighed his options. Considering what to tell Alaric, 
Hello, Elwo. Hmm, what is it? Now I know what motivated Nina to do that to Anna. It turns out that girl had feelings for you all along. And there's something else that will surprise you. What? Don't beat around the bush, Aiden. Aiden could hear the emotional growl from the other side of the line. Same here. His hand clenched in emotion as he was about to say it. Aiden took a deep breath and exhaled roughly. Nina was the reason for Anna's miscarriage. Shit, that damn girl. Aiden could clearly hear Alaric's curse. After that, Aiden decided to end the conversation unilaterally. Hopefully, his choice not to disclose everything to Alaric was the right one. He left Alaric's office and chose to go home. Perhaps a cold shower could refresh his mind. The problems involving his boss and his best friend were giving him a headache. The next day, Arvin finally set foot in Alaric's main mansion. He had been in a panic after being left behind without a single word two days ago at his cousin's second mansion. His oldest cousin was truly disrespectful, taking him on such a long journey without notifying him in advance. As a result, he only brought the clothes on his back, assuming that Alaric, his brother, would cover all his expenses, as he usually did. But it turned out to be a letdown. He was abandoned without a single penny by his heartless brother. However, there was something that made him feel relieved and able to sleep soundly now. Rainy was back. Ah, could he now claim Ronnie as his own? Considering two days ago, she had agreed to be his wife, even though the proposal was somewhat childish. Two days in Alaric's second mansion felt like a baby moon. Yes, a baby moon. As he had claimed from the beginning of his arrival, his seed could still impregnate dozens of women, and now Rainy was truly carrying his offspring. It wasn't in vain that they made love multiple times, even if it was only in one night. Arvin Jr. was now growing well in the womb of the mother of his children, and his instincts didn't lie when he claimed that Rainy was pregnant with his child even when they were apart before. How could Arvin know that Rainy was pregnant? After Alaric left them in the mansion yesterday, leaving Arvin and Rainy alone, Arvin bombarded Ronnie with various questions and he poured out his feelings. Ronnie was initially shy, considering she was talking to her new master, but she grew accustomed to it as Arvin continued to engage her in conversation. And with some hesitation and fear, Ronnie finally revealed something unexpected. She was three weeks pregnant. Arvin, at that moment, had a dumbfounded expression. But seconds later, he burst into joyful laughter and embraced Ronnie in his arms. And that's how the baby moon happened. Arvin's footsteps led him deeper into Alaric's mansion, carrying a small bag belonging to Rainy on his left side while possessively wrapping his arm around her waist. Bad at anyone's side. They walked towards the sofa and asked Ronnie to sit down and rest. Why is it so empty? He muttered to himself. He took each step, climbing the stairs one by one to reach Alaric's room. Perhaps his cousin was resting. Creak, creak, empty, empty. Oh, well, it, I'll just ask Rosalind. Arvin decided, heading back down. How's it going? He asked Ronnie, who replied with a shake of her head. I'll go find Rosalind first. You stay here, Arvin said, heading towards the backyard. Ronnie nodded obediently. The three-hour journey had left her tired. She remembered hitching a ride with a pickup truck that was heading to the city. Arvin had prioritized her and acted maturely. She was willing to sit in the hot truck bed for several hours with some goats brought by the owner of the vehicle. It was the only ride heading towards the city, so Arvin had to tag along since he had been staying at the mansion for two days. They're not here. Unusual. Arvin commented as he reappeared, making Ronnie turn her head. M2. Arvin, Ronnie. Arvin. From now on, get used to calling me Arvin. No need for titles like two and I'm not your master anymore. I'm your future husband. Remember that? 
or you can call me by another affectionate term, he said, causing Rani's cheeks to flush as she looked down shyly. Arvin walked closer to her. What's wrong? Do you need something? Arvin asked gently. Can I borrow your phone? Of course you can. Arvin quickly replied. He reached into his pocket and handed his phone to Rani. Use it as you like and as much as you want. Tea, thank you. Rani accepted the phone. Meanwhile, Arvin murmured to himself, Still nervous after spending two days and two nights there. With a serious expression, Ronnie typed a number into her phone and then attempted to make a call. Who are you calling? My sister. Maybe she knows where Mother Rose and the others are. Arvin nodded in agreement and then leaned back on the sofa, resting his head on Rainey's shoulder. The dial tone was heard, but her call went unanswered. How is it? Arvin, still in the same position, asked, Resting his head on Rainey's shoulder, Ronnie shook her head weakly. No answer. Oh, it's better for me to check in person if she's in her room. Alaric was overjoyed, truly. He even kept the promise he made to himself not to leave Anna for even a second when she regained consciousness. Two days had passed since Anna woke up from her critical condition. Now her condition was improving rapidly and if she continued to progress positively, she wouldn't need to stay in the hospital for long before being allowed to go home. Anna still gazed at Alaric, who was sleeping in a seated position with his head resting on the edge of her bed. He tightly held her hand, and unbeknownst to him, she smiled weakly. Seeing how disheveled Alaric looked when she first regained consciousness, Anna was sure that he hadn't slept for several days. I love you, Anna. The gentle voice echoed repeatedly, making Anna search for its source in a place she didn't recognize. Nevertheless, it was a beautiful and serene place with lush trees that brought comfort, green grass, and lovely flowers. As she searched, she heard the laughter of many young children running around in beautiful white dresses. One of them approached her. Hi, Mom. I missed you said the little girl, hugging Anna. They untangled from the embrace and looked up. Yay. She stared at the little girl. The child before her bore a resemblance to her, but the shoulder-length hair was the same color as Alaric's, and her eyes were exactly like his. Anna covered her mouth in disbelief, her tears falling. How is it possible? Where was this place? It hadn't been long since she lost her child, and now the child had grown up so fast, appearing as an adorable little girl about five years old. Anna knelt down and gently caressed her child's adorable face, trembling. Then she hugged her again. Missed you too, my dear. But you have to go back. Your father misses you more and he's waiting for you. Father? I truly love you. The voice sounded again, along with her child's disappearance. Suddenly, her vision blurred and, gradually, a beam of light entered her sight, revealing a man in a white coat examining her. It's truly a miracle. Miss Anna's condition has shown rapid progress after getting through the critical phase. However, don't talk to her for now as she's still weak. The man whom Anna identified as a doctor, said to another man, whom she couldn't see clearly because her vision was still blurry. The man walked towards her, leaving the doctor who eventually exited the room. It was Alaric, her master. Finally, you're awake, my love, Alaric said in a hoarse voice, holding Anna's hand and tenderly kissing it multiple times. Ronnie opened her room door, and there was her younger sister, who had been working as a maid. Mother Rose had provided a larger room that could accommodate two people since Nina was new and might need something or help from Rani. As a result, they were given a room together. The door opened, revealing Nina sitting on the floor with her face buried between her folded arms. Nina, I called you earlier, but you? Sis? Nina rushed into Ronnie's embrace. Sis, I'm scared. Nina said tearfully. What's wrong, Nina? What are you afraid of? And why are you in the room instead of working in the kitchen? 
Mother Rose is also not around. Wait, are you crying? No, sis. I'm scared. I made a mistake, Nina added, trembling with fear. What? What do you mean? Speak clearly. Everyone makes mistakes. But what are you talking about? Ronnie tried to stay calm. Sit down first and try to tell me calmly. Ronnie invited Nina to sit on the edge of the bed. Nina took a deep breath, her hands shaking. Then she started narrating all the things she did to Ronnie. As Ronnie listened, her hands clenched into fists, and she couldn't help but deliver a slap. Plackett wasn't just her hands. Ronnie's eyes were burning with anger as she listened to Nina's story. Who taught you to do such wicked things, Nina? Sis, I'm sorry. I was blinded by my desire for the master of this house. Ronnie's jaw tightened, and she roughly wiped her teary face. She couldn't imagine what Anna must have felt when she lost her potential child and almost lost her potential child and almost lost her life due to her sister's actions. You... Rani gritted her teeth, trying her best to control her emotions. Just imagine if it were me in Anna's position now, Nina. I know you're not stupid, but why were you so cruel? Where is the humanity you were taught at home and at school until you graduated? Wake up. We're just servants. We should know our boundaries. Nina looked down, not daring to argue. You know what? Your sister here is just like Anna. Nina looked up. What do you mean? Sai, your sister is pregnant. And would you call me names if you knew that this child is the master's child? Would you call me a cheap woman who likes to seduce her employer when in reality it's not like that? You can't claim what happened based on what you think or what you see. Nina's lips formed a thin line, her fingers intertwined in fear. Sis, forgive me. I know I was wrong. Please forgive me. That's why I'm asking you to help me leave this mansion without anyone knowing. I beg you. Ronnie looked at Nina without expression. You should ask for forgiveness. Not from me, but from Anna. Whether that woman will forgive you for all your wrongdoings or not, and as for helping you leave the mansion without getting caught... I'm sorry, but I can't do that. I can't help someone who runs away from their mistakes. You have to take responsibility for all the crimes you committed, Nina. After saying that, Ronnie left Nina crying and sobbing without looking back even once. Anna gently touched the top of Alaric's head with her hand free from his grip, caressing it affectionately. Anna smiled wistfully. She was back in the place called the hospital, Her small movement eventually woke Alaric. A worried expression was clearly displayed on his handsome, weary face. Do you need something, my dear? Anna smiled warmly, but then shook her head. Her master now never called her by her real name. No, sir. Alaric sighed in frustration, reaching for both of Anna's hands to hold them. I've told you countless times, don't call me sir anymore. It's better if you call me something sweeter, like darling, for example, so we can be on the same level. Anna couldn't hide her blush, and she couldn't help but smile shyly in front of Alaric. Alaric's wandering fingers gently caressed Anna's cheeks in a panic, trying to erase the reddish hue on her face. Anna, what's wrong? Why is your face turning red? Are you feeling unwell? I'll... Anna placed her index finger on Alaric's lips, silencing him. I'm fine. Alaric nodded, and Anna noticed that his expression softened, looking somewhat hesitant. He seemed reluctant to tell her something. Uh, are you hungry? Do you want to eat something? Anna shook her head again. No, um, can I ask something? Alaric nodded. Please, you're free to ask anything. When can I go home? I just want to go home. Alaric shook his head. We'll ask the doctor when you can go home. But for now, the most important thing is for you to focus on your recovery and... Alaric held Anna's hand and gazed into her eyes earnestly. Because I don't want to lose you again. Anna furrowed her brows, curious. Now it was her turn to affectionately stroke Alaric's jaw. What's wrong? Is something bothering you? You can share it with me if you want. Alaric's gaze softened, unsure whether he should tell Anna or not. But she needed to know. Alaric took a deep breath. 
I want to tell you, but I don't know where to start because it involves you. Me. Alaric nodded. All right, you can start from anywhere in the story. We'll just get straight to the point if you're unsure. Alaric let out a heavy sigh. He was still hesitant to tell Anna the whole truth. Actually, it's about you being deliberately locked in a warehouse filled with toxic gas. Anna nodded, encouraging Alaric to continue. And so, Alaric began telling his story, revealing the culprit behind her coma. Anna was taken aback when Alaric mentioned that Nina was the one who did it. She didn't expect it to be her sister. But for what reason? Alaric wiped the crease on Anna's forehead. Don't frown like that. Ask what you want to know. What was Nina's reason for doing it? She? She's always been kind to me. I even regarded her as my own sister. Do you know why she did it? Alaric nodded. Yes, Aiden said that Nina had feelings for me. Anna couldn't help but chuckle. That's it. How does that relate to me? She mumbled to herself, but Alaric heard it. Clearly, she was jealous of you because you managed to capture my heart. Alaric's spontaneous statement left them both momentarily silent. Alaric, realizing what he said, coughed awkwardly. Anna, on the other hand, turned her face away, her cheeks heating up. But that's not all. Alaric continued. Anna turned back, noticing Alaric clenching his fists, looking emotional. She reached for his clenched hand and caressed it. She... She was also behind you falling down the stairs and having a miscarriage. She's the reason our child didn't make it into this world. Anna remained still in her position. Her heart ached upon learning this fact. She could see that Alaric's eyes were red as he talked about their unborn child, who had left this world before her. And I won't just stand still regarding this, Anne. I don't care if it's worth it or not. All that's in my mind right now is to give her the retribution she deserves. So allow me to retaliate against her and... Val, please control your emotions. Making decisions while in an emotional state won't end well. As Anna was about to respond to Alaric, a knock on the door diverted their attention, ending their conversation reluctantly. Come in, come in, Alaric replied. Rosaline entered with Wanda, giving warm smiles to both Anna and Alaric. It's good that you came. I have to leave now to take care of some business. I'm entrusting Anna to you. Alaric said flatly. Al, I beg you, control your emotions. Alaric looked at Anna, walked towards her, and gave her a brief kiss on her forehead. Sorry, I can't promise that. After that, Alaric walked out of the room, leaving the three people inside. Alaric strode out of the room, leaving the three people behind in silence. Rosaline and Wanda approached carrying a parcel filled with fresh fruits. Anna? Rosaline said as she approached her. Mother Rose. Anna's tears broke free as Rosaline hugged her. Anna glanced briefly at Wanda, who stood still not far from Rosaline. Wanda? Anna whispered forcing herself to smile, and Wanda responded with a nod and a forced smile. Rosaline interrupted their embrace. Anna, what's really going on? Why did the master seem so emotional and rush to leave? Just one by one, please, Wanda warned, making Rosaline regret her mistake. Anna looked down, uncertain where to start the story. Wanda took Anna's hand and smiled. If you're not ready to tell us yet, it's okay. Anna looked up at Wanda with teary eyes. Thank you, Wanda. Nina, Nina. Alaric's booming voice echoed as he stepped into the mansion. Nina, 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 where are you? Alaric's emotions reached their peak when there was no response from the person he called. And to add to it, Arvin suddenly appeared in front of him with his wretched sister. Ronnie, where is your wretched sister? Alaric questioned sharply. Brother, what's wrong? Arvin asked, confused, looking at Rainy with a fearful expression. Now control your emotion. Aiden, who stood behind Alaric, warned, placing a hand on his shoulder. Alaric brushed off Aiden's hand, dismissively. He wanted to meet that arrogant girl and teach her a lesson. 
Alaric's eyes turned red, and his fists clenched tightly as he stared at Ronnie sharply again. Where is Nina? Ronnie? His outburst made Arvin step back, protecting Rainy, who stood petrified by Alaric's groundless yelling. Seriously, what's going on? Arvin asked, getting agitated. Alaric waved off Arvin to get out of his way, ignoring Ronnie, who was now crying silently, unable to meet his gaze. It's my problem with her undisciplined sister. Let me ask again. That's it. It comes my problem when you dare to scold the woman I love, even though you're my cousin. Arvin cut in quickly, also clenching his fists. Alaric's jaw tightened, and he stared back at Arvin, who was equally fierce. Not only was Arvin puzzled by suddenly seeing Rainy in tears after meeting her sister, and his woman staying silent when he asked, but now, his cousin appeared like a demon. Alaric sneered cynically. Hmm, like I care about that. What I care about now is... Alaric's hatred, filled gaze shifted to Ronnie, who looked down, unable to meet his eyes. She is the sister of a heartless demon who shamelessly almost took the life of the woman I love. And after that, she took away the life of our unborn child. Arvin's clenched fist weakened as he stared at Rainy. He was genuinely confused. So, I ask you again, where is Nina? I'm here, sir. Wanda sat in a waiting chair next to Anna's bed and started an awkward conversation. What fruits do you want, Anna? Shall I peel them for you? Wanda offered. Anna turned to look at Wanda and shook her head gently. I just want to go home. Rosaline and Wanda exchanged glances both thinking the same thing. They couldn't possibly take Anna back without Alaric's consent, even if the doctor declared she could leave. Mother Rose, please. I want to go home. Take me home. Anna pleaded, gripping Rosaline's hand tightly as she sat next to her, looking both worried and confused. No response from Anna. She turned to Wanda, who stood next to her bed. Wanda, please. I have to go home now. I can't leave Nina. Nina. What's wrong with Nina? Rosaline asked. Anna remained silent, biting her lower lip. Nina will be punished by Mr. Alarak. So I must be in the mansion before Mr. Al gives her a severe punishment. Wait, Anna. What is this all about? It? Wanda couldn't contain her curiosity about Anna's apparent concern for Nina. You wouldn't be worried that Mr. Al would punish Nina without a reason if Nina didn't do anything wrong, right? Rosaline added. Is this why Mr. Isle seemed so emotional earlier? What's going on, Anna? Tell us, we're your family, aren't we? Anna nodded affirmatively, took a deep breath, and exhaled. There was no harm in being honest. Anna looked at Rosaline and Wanda alternately, then closed her eyes momentarily. Actually, Anna took another deep breath and opened her eyes. Actually, it was Nina who trapped me in the warehouse. What? Rosaline and Wanda were still digesting the news Anna had just revealed. Could it be true? Nina? How is that even possible? Rosaline reacted reflexively, while Anna simply shook her head, not knowing. Although Wanda had only known Nina for a short time, she had witnessed her interactions with Anna, and everything seemed fine, just like a younger sister with her older sibling, sometimes feeling jealous. So please, let's go home now. Anna pleaded once more. Rosaline looked at Wanda, who looked back at her. They exchanged glances, silently deciding on their course of action. I'm here, sir. Nina stood not far from him, fearlessly meeting his gaze. His large steps brought him closer, his emotions threatening to explode as he faced the girl who was more despicable than himself. Even Alaric couldn't bring himself to claim that he was seeing his own arrogance in the form of a woman. As despicable as he was, he had never thought of taking the life of an innocent person. Alaric clenched both his hands tightly and a hard slap landed on Nina's cheek, leaving a visible mark in contrast to her fair skin. You? Alaric pointed accusingly at Nina's face, filled with rage. You're utterly disgusting. He couldn't hold back his exasperation. To his surprise, Nina didn't show fear. 
but rather chuckled softly at his insult, as if his words were a joke, making Alaric even angrier that her reaction wasn't what he expected. Alaric bent down to be at eye level with the girl before him, gripping both of Nina's shoulders tightly. He paid no attention to her wincing in pain. That pain was nothing compared to the pain a father felt when losing his unborn child. You're a real demon, Nina. You're even more despicable than a beast like me. Now come with me, Alaric said, squeezing Nina's arms tightly, pulling her with anger towards the backyard. Wait, ow. Someone shouted, trying to stop him. Alaric abruptly stopped when he heard that voice. He turned around, surprised to find Anna, surprised to find Anna standing at the doorway, breathing heavily. Anna, mana. He whispered, 